Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to upgrade the jumper T light radio to have long range DSM2. What do you mean by long range DSM2, you ask? As we all know, the jumper T light comes with this module bay which allows you to put in a Crossfire Nano, which is a long range system that's very popular among the FPV flyers. But I do not want to use a Crossfire because I have a whole fleet of aircraft that uses the DSM-2 receivers. So the question is, is there a DSM-2 long range module that you can put right here, which is similar to a Crossfire module kind of concept? Unfortunately, there isn't one, but in this video, we're going to make our own kind of DSM-2 long range module by using this amplifier here. As you can see, it's a very lightweight and small amplifier, smaller than the Crossfire Nano module and we could fit it right to the back here. The challenge here is to power this amplifier which will run on 5 volts to 15 volts but we only have a 1 cell lithium ion here which is 4.1 volts. So with that we could output high power DSM-2 and have long range control for all of our DSM-2 or DSM-X aircraft. To verify if there is really any increase in output power, I'm pulling out my spectrum analyzer to do some readings. Let us conclude the results of the spectrum analyzer reading. Firstly, we know that there is a gain of about 5 dB by having the amplifier on the T-Light radio. And secondly, we know that there's not much difference in using a higher power supply to power the amplifier like a 2-cell LiPo pack because 5 volts and 8 volts provide the same amount of gain in terms of output. Based on the readings of the spectrum analyzer just now, we know it's okay to use 5 volts instead of a 2-cell or 3S LiPo pack to power the amplifier. However, it's not practical to use a 5 volts power bank like this one. So we're going to use this step-up regulator, which will increase the 1-cell from the 18650 and step it up to 5 volts to power the amplifier. Let me hook up everything and test that. The whole setup doesn't overload the power supply, which is that battery over there. And then we will do a range test as well. And the receiver is already bound with the orange light indicating there. So let's do the first range test. Let's get off the house. The first brown out here. Signal recovers. Alright, second brown out. Okay, it's intermittent now. No signal. Okay, it recovers here. Uh, making a right turn. Take walls. No signal. Alright, signal recovers somewhere here. It's intermittent. It's intermittent signal. Alright, let's hit back. There's no way I could FPV down this corridor with the signal dropping out. The 1 cell to 5 volts booster is now turned on, as you can see with the blue light there. So, this amplifier is now turned on. Let's turn on the radio. Let's do a range test.
okay we have the first brown out but it recovers let's continue walking it's excellent I got a signal behind this thick wall heading back now now that was a quick test in terms of the range and penetration outside I'm going to turn off the transmitter because it's creating a noise to the microphone of the camera so as we are going down that corridor and getting to the lift landing behind those thick walls outside you could see that there's a significant improvement with using the amplifier as compared to without the amplifier so yeah the amplifier works really well and if you're worrying about the current consumption of this whole setup with the single lithium ion battery powering the radio itself and the step up to 5 volts to power the amplifier I'm getting about 11 minutes with 0.1 volt of battery drain so from 3.9 volts to 3.3 volts that will give you slightly more than an hour of usage which is fine considering that I'm using a cheap China 18650 battery so if I'm upgrading the battery to a higher quality one like Panasonic or Sony then I should expect much longer run times now before I solder these two wires to the battery terminals inside the controller there's one last problem to solve that is how do we turn on the amplifier without having a separate switch now if you look at the jumper T-Lite module bay the blue and green wires supply 3.8 volts to this module bay and that happens when we turn on the jumper T-Lite radio now instead of having the blue and green wires supply 3.8 volts to the module here these wires are turning on this little relay which is rated at 3 volts and this is the pinout diagram as you can see I have soldered everything accordingly but do take note of the polarity as this is the top view so you got to reverse the polarity when you're soldering these two legs you could use pin 5 and 6 or pin 4 and 3 here I'm using both for redundancy and to allow uh, support for higher current I'm going to cut the red wire here to add this relay switch so when we turn on the T-Lite radio 3.8 volts will turn on the relay which will allow power from the battery to the step up and step up will supply 5 volts to turn on the amplifier to attach the amplifier to the back of the T-Lite radio we need a custom module bay and here we are using a toothpick container now what I've done with the toothpick container is I've cut it down to a length of 4.5 cm and I've drilled three holes for the screws to attach it to the back of the T-Lite radio I've also drilled another two holes here which are for the screws to attach it to the amplifier so the screws will line up perfectly with these two holes and these two holes here on the other side are for the screwdriver to turn the screw like so and the big hole here are for all the wires to run through into the T-Lite radio alright the module is done and now this is how it looks like as you can see we have the wires all tucked in neatly basically the relay and that step up regulator are covered in heat string to prevent any short circuit due to these metal screws now the micro MOLEX connector of our DIY module bay will have to be connected to this port here and the red and black wires will have to be soldered to the terminals of the battery since we're going to solder the ground wires to that metal tab I took the opportunity to upgrade it on the right is the original ground tab and a lot of people tried to bend the metal upwards to give better tension to hold the battery but over time the metal will be compressed and again the battery will come loose while you're flying and that's no good so we'll be replacing this one with a spring loaded metal tab and this spring will give the tension that we need to secure the battery and prevent any loose contact problem that we may have finally everything is complete and this is how it looks like At the back we have the module and the coaxial cable so this antenna has to be removed in order to put in the battery and that's the upgraded spring loaded metal tap there and 
and when you put in a battery it's easy to tell that this is ground so put in ground through here it is by no sheer coincidence that the battery can fit in nicely like that did precise measurements to position the module to give enough clearance to the battery if you have a 3d printer that's good news for you because I will be posting a link to the 3D printer part for this bracket. Now let's put back the battery lid and see if everything works. To check that the relay is working as it should, I have attached a battery tester to measure the output voltage. Now let's power on the jumper T lights. It's about 5.08 volts. Yep, the relay has switched off. As you can see, the radio still fits into the hands nicely. And at the back here, you can see the blue light, which indicates that the amplifier is receiving signal from your T light radio. Once you're done flying, you can shut down everything with the convenience of a single button. This mod will give you that extra range that you need for all your 2.4 GHz to fry FPV. That's all I have. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you in the next one.